Hey everyone, I wanted to say thanks for all the recent donations. In the past few weeks I've received a whole bunch of really cool and interesting pieces of equipment that will be making appearances in future videos. So let me know if you want a personal shout out when I make those and I'll put your name in the video. Over the past few weekends I've made a lot of pieces of glass coated with indium tin oxide, which is supposed to be a transparent conductor but unfortunately none of the pieces that I've made have conducted really very well at all. I mean, we're talking in like the mega ohms. And there's, I think I've probably found the reason for this finally. Um, I've been trying to make the ITO glass by evaporating pieces of indium tin oxide. And the way that I do this is by putting a, a small chip of already formed ITO in a metal boat and then heat the boat up and in a vacuum environment the molecules of indium tin oxide come off of the surface because the material is just so hot and then deposit on the glass surface which is nearby. A problem with this is that in the vacuum environment uh, ITO may not be stable. I've had a tough time finding resources for this but at such low pressures uh, the oxygen wants to leave the tin and then you end up with just a metallic tin deposit instead of a tin oxide deposit. So I've tried all kinds of things to um, get around this. I went as far as building a digital uh, temperature controlled kiln with an argon atmosphere so that I could anneal the pieces afterwards in argon. I also uh, could hook up oxygen to that to make an oxygen furnace. I also connected uh, tanks of oxygen and argon to my vacuum chamber and tried evaporating the ITO in, in atmospheres of varying concentrations of oxygen. The one thing I don't have is a mass flow controller, so I couldn't really get an exact ratio of argon and oxygen, but I certainly tried different pressures of each gas individually. Unfortunately, none of this worked. I, I made plenty of pieces that were um, certainly thick enough in IT, uh, you know, coating thick enough to be conductive, and certainly a lot of them were not transparent, but uh, I couldn't really get transparent and also conductive, or even really conductive on the ones that weren't so transparent. So anyway, I, I'm finally coming down to building a sputter coater, which is what I should have done in the first place, but uh, I'll have another video about that in the future. Today I wanted to talk about monitoring the thickness of the film that we're creating inside a vacuum chamber. And so I picked up this bit of kit on eBay, and what this is, is a uh, quartz crystal thickness monitor, or sometimes called, I think, a microbalance. And the way this works is you put a quartz crystal in the vacuum chamber right next to the glass that we're going to coat with ITO. And the crystal is resonating at, say, 6 megahertz. And as the ITO evaporates and uh, forms a film on the glass substrate, it also forms a coating on the quartz crystal, which is exposed. And as the quartz crystal grows in thickness, its frequency will start to drop. And this box here measures the frequency drop and displays uh, the thickness of the film on the front. So there's an equation that you can use to figure out uh, how a change in frequency will result in a, uh, or corresponds to a change in film thickness. The inputs and outputs are pretty simple. It just has a, a coax a BNC connector on the back, which connects, which supplies DC power to the oscillator and also receives the um, 6 megahertz signal in from the crystal and then it has a relay output and the purpose of that is so that you can set like a desired thickness on the front panel and then press start and it will uh, use the relay to start your, uh, your deposition process and then it will monitor the thickness and then stop the process when the film has reached the desired thickness. So very helpfully the manufacturer of this device still has the manual for it online or it will scan and this device came out in 1986, back when manuals had full schematics and even a foil layout for the PCB. So figuring out how this thing worked was actually a lot easier uh, with that in hand. Uh, it's basically based around this chip, which for some reason they decided needed a heat sink. And that is an AM9513, which is basically just a counter. So what this circuit does is just count the incoming pulses from the 6 megahertz crystal and uh, it measures those in a time period and then figures out how much the frequency has changed. So there doesn't, uh, when I opened this up, I expected to find like a really precise uh, temper or a, a temperature controlled crystal oscillator or some sort of a precise time base, but it actually doesn't need that because all it's measuring are reference, are um, uh, relative differences. So the only 
clock element in here is this plain old 4 megahertz, uh, not temperature controlled oscillator there. And when you first power it up, it just zeroes itself to whatever signal is coming in. The way it works is that the drift caused by, or the, the shift in frequency caused by the um, process being deposited onto the quartz crystal inside the vacuum chamber will be so much bigger than any drift caused by temperature variations that there's really no reason to have a, a much more accurate time base in the device. So the counter here is controlled by a Z80 CPU and this is a display driver for the front panel, the seven segment uh, displays. And then there's two EEPROMs which probably have all the character data for the front panel. And this is a RAM which is powered by these battery backups here. And the idea for that is just to store these front parameters, or the, the front panel parameters that the user has to put in. So they, in the manual it says it's supposed to keep its memory for 60 days. And that's the purpose of those big batteries there. So to test this thing out, and also potentially to use it in the real vacuum chamber, I needed a 6 megahertz crystal that was exposed so that I could actually deposit something onto the surface. And uh, very helpfully suggested by one of my YouTube viewers, I should just get one of these TTL oscillator cans and cut the top off, which is exactly what I did. And it took a few tries. I had to figure out how deep I could cut in and how much um, clearance there was actually inside so that I didn't mar anything up. But eventually I got the program set and cut a bunch open. So now if I press the start button, the shutter open light comes on and if there were a rate uh, happening, it would show that it would integrate that into a total thickness. And this device actually allows um, the total thickness to go up or down, which at first doesn't seem to make any sense. How could the material disappear once it's been deposited? But I think in some processes you could actually have the surface re-emit um, mass at least. Maybe it's changing structure or if it's becoming more porous or something. But um, the rate here is measured in angstroms per second and then the total thickness is in thousand angstroms and an angstrom is a tenth of a nanometer. So if I just use some of this, this is a refrigerant, just a very heavy gas, and I'm not even really changing the temperature, I'm just blowing some across the surface of the crystal. We can see that it's measuring a rate and also accumulating some total thickness here. But what's cool is if I, when, when the gas dissipates, it actually drops down pretty close to zero again because the crystal has returned to its original frequency. These quartz crystal sensors can be used in a lot of different environments. It doesn't just have to be for sensing a film thickness in a vacuum chamber. For example, you can put the entire crystal into a liquid environment and coat one side of the crystal with some sort of a biologically active surface. And when you submerge the whole thing in liquid, you can tell if there's things bonding to one surface or not, if they prefer to bond to that biologically active site. You can actually measure the mass of that tiny amount of, of um, you know, molecules bonding to it. I think these are also used in gas sensors where you can coat one surface of the quartz crystal with a uh, substance that locks down a certain gas and then when that gas blows across the crystal a very very small number of atoms or molecules latch onto it and change the mass on one side of the surface so they're amazingly sensitive devices. Okay so hopefully next time I'll have that inside the vacuum chamber and measuring real fi uh, film thickness in real time. Okay, see you next time.